Hello, I'm Yvette Torres. On behalf of my colleagues at SAMHSA's Recovery Month team, I welcome you to the Road to Recovery 2016, a showcase of events. Every September, people all around the country observe Recovery Month. Supported by SAMHSA and more than 200 planning partners, Recovery Month celebrates people in recovery, raises our awareness and understanding of mental and or substance use disorders, and recognizes those who work in the field of behavioral health. The 2016 theme, Join the Voices for Recovery, Our Families, Our Stories, Our Recovery, highlights the personal recovery stories of families who have overcome mental and or substance use disorders. The voices of families that speak about their experiences of recovery are very powerful. Families who share their recovery journeys show others that they are not alone and that recovery is possible. Hearing their stories of recovery can help inspire others to take a first step on the path of hope, health, and wellness. As we hear these personal stories, we begin to understand that families in recovery are diverse and come from all walks of life. Their pathways of recovery take many different forms, but they all are characterized by relationships based on care, support, and respect. These stories also show us that families in recovery aim for all members to live self-directed lives and achieve their full potential. For more than 25 years, National Recovery Month has educated Americans about the facts. Nearly one in 10 Americans struggle with a substance use disorder, and about one in five have a mental health condition. No individual and no family are immune to these disorders and their effects. National Recovery Month also sends an even more important message. Mental health services, substance use treatment, and recovery support services make it possible for those with these disorders to lead healthy, rewarding, and productive lives. The benefits of recovery extend beyond the individual to families and communities. Recovery Month events are opportunities to engage others in supporting people in recovery. People who participate can assist those in need of treatment get the help they need to overcome mental and or substance use disorders. Hosting activities and events during Recovery Month spurs conversation about prevention, treatment, and recovery services for behavioral health conditions. Such conversations, particularly families in recovery telling their stories, can really bring home to elected or appointed officials, civic, business, and other community leaders the gains and cost savings that can be achieved through the availability of mental and or substance use disorder services. Good morning, everyone and welcome to SAMHSA's 27th annual Recovery Month observance. Uh, this year, we're asking everyone to join the voices of recovery. Um, and our theme this year is our families, our stories, our recovery. Uh, because we know that families play an important role in people's recovery. Recovery Month provides an opportunity to celebrate those Americans in recovery from substance use disorders and or mental illness. It also celebrates the hard work the day-to-day -day work of dedicated professionals in the field, of advocates, of grassroots organizations, and of the family members and friends who have joined their loved one on this unique journey of recovery. Today, SAMHSA is releasing a national report, Behavioral Health Trends in the United States, results from the 2015 National Survey on Drug Use and Health. Millions of Americans are affected by mental and substance use disorders each year, and millions, in fact, most go without the treatment that could help them achieve recovery. Nearly 55 million Americans, 54.9 million Americans, or one in five adults in America, met the criteria for a substance use disorder or a mental illness in the past year, and only 39% of that 55 million 
receive services. One of the guiding uh, principles of our national drug control strategy is that it's based on science and driven by data. And I think it's really important that while we have made some significant progress in a whole host of issues, uh, I want to highlight kind of one area that Kana talked about that needs uh, dire attention. And that is really, uh, despite all of our efforts of the Affordable Care Act and the parity law and the resources that the Obama administration has put in to increase access to treatment, we know that too many people are not getting treatment for the care of their substance use disorder. I, like Kana, find it uh, um, incredibly uh, moving uh, and motivating that we need to increase the capacity of those uh, people who are getting care and treatment. So we need to expand access to treatment and we need to do it now. Because like every other disease, people who want treatment should be able to get it. And it should not be dependent on where they live or how much money they have. The president has put forward a plan to do this. In fiscal year 2017 budget, he calls for $1.1 billion in new funding to expand prevention, treatment, and recovery support services. Expanding access to treatment means more people will reach recovery and be able to forge healthier lives. Recovery Month reminds us that there is hope that through evidence-based treatment and services, that there is hope for a better tomorrow for the millions of Americans who experience behavioral health conditions in their families. We know, in fact, that every American with mental illness and substance use disorders can improve and most can and do recover. And I know this personally because I am one of those individuals having lived with mental health and addiction conditions for most of my life. Throughout my personal journey of recovery, with the support of my family and community and sharing my story, I have joined the Voices of Recovery and you can too. My recovery hasn't been easy. It's included many ups and downs, curves and U-turns, but by continually educating myself on new coping skills and utilizing them, I'm able to live a healthy and happy life. Throughout my journey, it was always important to have a good support system as well. They were the ones that held the candle when I couldn't seem to see the light. Those genuine relationships enriched my recovery. There are many things that I'm able to do now that depression doesn't seem to have a hold of me anymore. But nothing compares to the love that I have for my two-year-old daughter who has given me so much purpose and hope again. For anyone that's out there feeling dark or is feeling like there's a dark cloud over them and there's no light in sight, please know that this too shall pass and that you're never alone. If you reach out, someone's always reaching back. For over two decades, SAMHSA's Center for Substance Abuse Treatment, CSAT, has played a vital role in the successful treatment and sustained recovery of millions of Americans who are now living healthy and productive lives. They're supporting their families, they're building their communities, and they're contributing to the well-being of this country. CSAT funded programs are focused on screening for substance, abuse, substance use disorders in a variety of settings, increasing access to treatment and recovery supports for people who have substance use disorders, and ensuring that the, the care that people get is of quality. CSAT programs also address conditions that are commonly co-occurring with substance use disorders, like depression and anxiety, or infectious diseases like HIV and hepatitis. Our programs focus on underserved populations individuals, families, and communities that fall into the treatment gap that still persists in our nation's healthcare delivery system. We closely monitor and evaluate the services we fund and those for which we have regulatory responsibility. Performance outcome measures from these evaluations indicate, indicate that our programs are improving health outcomes, they are increasing housing, employment, and education for people with substance use disorders, and they are reducing criminal justice involvement. I grew up in a time where it was real popular to do drugs. In the late 60s and 70s, there were uh, stores all over the place. You could go buy cocaine spoons. It, it was just so popular. And a lot of my friends went to Vietnam. And when they came back, they were addicted, my husband in particular. Uh, so when he came back from Vietnam, he, he wasn't there very long, but he was hurt. And he saw things that I, I don't think any 20-year-old is supposed to see. So when he got back, uh, he was addicted. He was already addicted to heroin. So I was introduced to heroin. And I liked it. What helped me is methadone. There's nothing wrong with methadone. Methadone saved my life, gave me my life back, gave me another career. 
And if we could take the stigma off of methadone, any medication that would assist somebody to their recovery, they can sustain their lives and they can become productive, self-sufficient people. And the thing that I know is recovery services. Treatment is important because you need that, but it was the recovery services that saved my life and the reason why I'm standing here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for honoring us by your presence here today to help us celebrate the 27th uh, National Recovery Month luncheon. Uh, we've always been concerned about education and prevention and intervention and treatment and recovery and all of the continuum. And we've always believed that uh, it's only all of us working together can we really achieve progress and most importantly, continue and sustain that progress. And that's really what recovery is all about. In the area of prevention, uh, it's about a lot of things when it comes to opioids. It's about making sure that physicians understand and appreciate when and under what circumstances, as limited as they need to be, opioids should be prescribed. So the CDC's come out with new guidelines, basically setting the parameters and the borders. These are the boundaries. These are the questions that you should ask. These are the options you should consider before you make that decision to provide a patient with opioids. And when you do, when it is appropriate, when it is necessary, make sure that the number of prescribed pills meets the need, that you don't overprescribe. And if it turns out that you have an individual who keeps coming back and coming back and coming back and coming back, maybe you ought to take them aside and just start asking them a few questions. And maybe you will find that that individual is now among the millions taking these medications without really managing pain and maybe you can help redirect that person into a, a treatment and recovery cycle. And recently, uh, we announced uh, additional resources from HHS that's been a great partner um, with Michael's shop and with uh, our shop at USDA, with FDA. Uh, folks have been engaged in this in a very collaborative way. So they've put more resources out. Uh, earlier in the year, we put out uh, roughly $94 million that helped to expand access uh, to 271 uh, clinics, expand the access or create 271 new locations, if you will, for help. You know, recovery is incredibly important because you can have the, all the prevention in the world and all the treatment in the world, but you also have to have the capacity to have a community that supports you every single minute of every single day for the rest of your life. My story is yours. I am a mother. I'm a father. A son. A daughter. I am in recovery from a mental illness. A substance use disorder. With support from family and community. We, we are, are victorious. victorious. Join the Voices for Recovery. Our families, our stories, our recovery. For confidential information on mental and substance use disorders, including prevention and treatment referral for you or someone you know, call 1-800-662-HELP. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. to me means living a normal life, being able to live the life the way I want to live it, and not having anyone saying, well, you know, you have a mental illness, you can't do that, and not having medications control my life, but being able to have that conversation with my doctor and being able to say, this works for me, not having a pill forced on me, but having joint choices made. And the peers gave me the hope and understanding of what recovery meant. Being able to communicate with others who lived the same experience that I was going through, wow, I never had that connection. Someone who knew what I was going through. One of the things that I started to realize as I got older and started my journey in 2008 is that I was suffering from trauma and I never realized the impact of what trauma did in my life. Recovery means to me today, living fully, being well, being happy, dancing in the rain when the storms keep coming, because life, life happens. And I am somebody, and I have choice, and I have power today. And recovery is about letting people know my story 
and not been afraid. About 12 years ago, I reached a point in my addiction that uh, I lost everything. I uh, lost all hope to live, lost my family, friends. And with, with every, everything I had left, I, I said a prayer. And at that time, I didn't believe in anything. But I said this prayer um, months before I, I got clean and sober. And I had asked for a chance to, to change my life. And what I learned was that at the same time I was making this prayer, there was an agreement being made in the spiritual world, in this world that I could not see with the physical eye. And, and it, was, it was an agreement being made between my spirit and the spirit of recovery. And that I would spend the rest of my life helping others get clean and sober. And so I entered treatment, you know, a few months later. And I'm a person in long-term recovery. I haven't used alcohol or drugs since 2004. I just got to a place of hopelessness in my own addiction. Um, a place to where I couldn't really go on anymore. To where my only option was either um, death or, or just living in that constant death. Um, and so I, I made a choice, in a sense, to give my will over and uh, to try a new way of life and to surrender. And since then, uh, exponentially better. I've um, been in recovery for a little over 14 years uh, and my life is, is beyond what I could have even imagined at that time. My family and friends are always with me, no matter where I may be. Sharing stories from home helps me sustain my recovery from my mental and substance use disorder. Join the voices for recovery. Our families, our stories, our recovery. For confidential information on mental and substance use disorders, including prevention and treatment referral for you or someone you know, call 1-800-662-HELP. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Recovery events took place across the globe in September as tens of thousands gathered in local communities to celebrate the courage, the strength, and the support that have helped so many experience firsthand that recovery is possible, that recovery can and does happen, and there is joy in recovery. September 10th was the date of the McShin Foundation's 12th Annual Recovery Fest and 7th Annual KCBS Barbecue Cook-Off. The cook-off started out as a way to help people in recovery at McShin have a little fun and spread the message of smoke meat, not drugs. And we have used this day to really expand the recovery movement in Virginia. Each year the event gets a little bit bigger, more people come, and um, you know we feel like anybody who's trying to get the word about, out about recovery, um, use this event to showcase what you do but even more importantly, to let people know that recovery happens. Not only just fun and recovery, but it's a family event that our people can bring their kids and their family members to, you know, to show them like they can have fun and recovery and to start healing those families back together. That's why we have these events. We go to so many funerals, we're kind of over it. Um, it. It's a lot and, it's, and the kids are getting younger and younger, you know, that are dying from this disease. So. That's kind of in a nutshell we do, um, smoke and meat, not drugs, you know, that's our thing. You got people coming out here, they don't know anything about addiction, they don't know that it affects you in so many different aspects and areas of your life, and it's just awesome being able to cook a little barbecue, hang out with your friends, inform people about the disease of addiction if they don't know anything about it. The event also featured speakers who delivered some encouraging news about federal support for the recovery movement. We're going to do the first ever Surgeon General's Report on addiction, drugs, alcohol, drugs, and health. It's gonna be the first time that we take a scientific look on, on the neurobiology of substance use, on prevention, treatment, recovery, and financing, and understanding, putting all the science in one place to say this is a real brain disease. This is something that pe from which people can recover and from which people also can have a recurrence. And we need to make sure that those recovery support services are out there. And no one symbolizes the importance of that treatment and support more than those who are in recovery. The McShin Foundation and McShin Academy created this environment for me where there's other kids that are open about their feelings and want to get better. Because a lot of kids really do need this place. They just don't want to be honest with themselves and confront the fact that they do have a problem. Recovery is not easy, but it is worth it. You know, nothing happens overnight, but today I'm willing to work for the good things in life instead of trying to substitute and find an answer through an easy fix um, through drugs or alcohol. The recovery movement runs the gamut from barbecue to books. 
An event in Austin, Indiana, focused on a book called Dreamland by Sam Quinones, who traces the history of the opiate epidemic sweeping through small-town America. Doctors began to buy the idea in the mid-1990s that they should prescribe opiate painkillers for all manner of pain and in large doses and in unending prescriptions sometimes. And that this was, um, had created lots of addiction and that a lot of those addicts were transitioning by the mid-2000s, late, 2000, late 2009, 10, 11, to heroin and that was accelerating. And I felt that that was a national story that no one had told yet. I can remember, you know, first coming off of my pain medications thinking, how am I going to live? Because I had been treating chronic pain for years and followed the, the medical establishment's thought processes on that. And when we found those were all wrong, it was very scary. Uh, but the reality for me is being able to say, hey, you know what, not only is your pain going to get better off of all this stuff, you're going to have a better life if you immerse yourself into this recovery lifestyle. The event also included the release by SAMHSA of two new PSAs on addiction treatment and education, which were filmed in the local community. The PSAs will eventually be used throughout Indiana and neighboring Ohio and Kentucky. The addiction took me to living in the streets, um, not knowing where I was going to stay at or who I was going to stay with. And if I was going to be found in an alley, that was my mother's greatest fear. But, and my family is that they were going to see me or an unknown female in the Louisville area found in an alley. Recovery is such a better way of life. Um, I, I know the pain and the suffering that uh, people with the substance use disorder go through, having been there myself, been in that hell. And it is hell. Accidental overdose is the leading cause of accidental death today in the United States. And, you know, being a survivor of overdoses myself, I really, really want to get the message out there that there is hope, that there is a solution, and that we need to start talking about that solution more. This year's Recovery Month events culminated on October 2nd with the Big Texas Rally. People from coast to coast gathered with a common goal to celebrate recovery and to encourage people in recovery to freely share their stories, to open a national dialogue about recovery, and overcome the stigma associated with substance use and abuse. Allow us to show the world that prevention works, treatment is effective, and indeed, recovery is possible. My story is not unique, that I am just one of millions of Americans in recovery who've gone on to live long and productive lives, just like all of you. So it is so important, it is so important that all of you are here today. I can't tell you how critically important it is to show this community, this state, this nation that recovery is possible, that we can and deserve care, that addiction is not a disgrace, it's a disease, and that we deserve good care and good treatment for what we're trying to do. We've united across the nation to come together to support and celebrate the idea that recovery works, treatment is effective, prevention is possible, and uh, to come together to show the world that we're not hidden in church basements, that we're not hidden in any other parts of the country that we can be out in the open, and showing the world that this whole thing, this whole rally, this whole community is important. So being in recovery is a big access to me. It is very important to me that I do this so my loved ones, my friends, my next door neighbor, person across the street, the on the corner, can see a difference in me because guess what? When you're clean, it shows. You just glow. I mean, you just stand out like a soul thumb. Recovery means healing. It means freedom. It means freedom from addiction. It means being on that other side. It just means um, an opportunity to live a natural, joyful, uh, stable life, something that you're not able to do when you're in addiction. I salute each of you today that are in recovery. We know we could not do it without you. We are better together. That it, it takes the whole family. It's just not the one person, but it is the family, the spouses, children, that we're all in recovery, and recovery is good for our minds, for our families, and for our hope and future. Yes. Thank you. Recovery is good all the time. All the time. And all the time, recovery is good. The events showcased truly represent the passion and the spirit, enthusiasm, and support found in each and every recovery event across the nation and around the world. For more information on National Recovery Month, to find out how to get involved, or to locate an event near you, visit the Recovery Month website at recoverymonth.gov. 
The 2016 Recovery Month Observance highlighted the stories of family recovery. These are the stories of our own family members, our friends, our neighbors, and our coworkers. Millions of people are in recovery, but many more have yet to find their path to living self-directed lives and achieving their full potential. Sharing our family stories of recovery encourages others to seek treatment and find their own path to recovery. Your participation in Recovery Month events and your work to support recovery throughout the year helps thousands of people from all walks of life on the path to hope, health, and wellness. Please know that your work is greatly appreciated. As we recognize the success of the 2016 Recovery Month events, we also want you to turn your attention toward next year. You can be an agent for positive change to help people find their own unique path to recovery by getting involved in organizing a Recovery Month event for September. For information on how to get started, go to the Recovery Month website at recoverymonth.gov. There, you will find examples of events others have organized. When you visit the site, you'll see a wide range of events reflecting great diversity and creativity. We encourage you to organize an event that reflects your own unique imagination. Perhaps your event will be highlighted in our showcase of events for 2017. The Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration thanks you for all you do to support recovery. Let's keep this exciting work going. To download and watch this program or other programs in the Road to Recovery series, visit the website at recoverymonth.gov.